For the last week, I have been playing Starfield, and I am genuinely happy to be able to tell you guys that I have been thoroughly enjoying it. This game is a return to form for Bethesda Game Studios, in my opinion. They really do seem to have gone back to their roots, and they've made a game that is, well, it's comfortingly familiar. It's interesting enough to be different, but you really will recognize a Bethesda Game Studios game when you play this. In many ways, it feels like Skyrim. Obviously, I don't mean literally. They are very different genres, and due to the differences in the world spaces, they do play a little different as well. In some ways, you could argue Starfield has more in common with Fallout 4, as it does involve guns and technology rather than mythical creatures and magic, but this game just plays and feels more like their older games, more like Skyrim, Morrowind, Oblivion. It doesn't force you to engage with the main quest to unlock a lot of the content. It gives you a lot of stuff to do, a lot of freedom to choose what you want to do, and it gives you that, that stage upon which to experience the stories they are telling you, but also express your own story. 45 hours into the game and I'm already planning my second, third, fourth and fifth playthrough with different characters. Now, although I've played for about 45 hours, I've only just scratched the surface of this game. It is huge. I've really not explored the galaxy much at all, only the, the sort of systems and planets in the area you start with. I've only encountered two of the major factions at the moment, and I've not joined either of those either. I've been generally doing the main quest, side quests, doing a little bit of exploring, engaging with some of the mechanics like the outposts, generally trying to get an overview of the entire game. And when I look at the map, when I look at the star map, I realize I have got a lot left to do. So it's very hard to give a definitive review of the game. It is a good sign that it's large, that I can do a lot of things, but obviously I can't really give an opinion on those until I've discovered them. What I can tell you is I've enjoyed myself so far and I'm thoroughly looking forward to finishing this video and getting back to playing. I'm excited to see what's out there. So, for the rest of this video, I want to talk about the details. I want to discuss the specifics of what I've experienced thus far. Let's start with the elephant in the room, the state of the game. In the last few years, we've all become a little jaded because games keep getting released in an unfinished, half-baked state. And so, of course, this was one of the worries about Starfield. Was there going to be too much pressure to release the game that they would do so when it wasn't done? I am happy and <laughs> relieved to tell you that this is not the case. The game is very stable, it's pretty damned polished, and the performance is solid. I've had zero crashes in my entire time playing. And whilst I've had some very minor bugs, seven so far, um, they've all been incredibly minor. The worst one was a quest where I was to follow someone. It was a tour. They said, okay, I will take you on a tour, follow me. And they didn't move and the quest never appeared in my journal. That is the only one that I would consider to be bad and it really didn't make much of a difference. I reported this to a PR agent for Bethesda. Hopefully they will have received that report and can make sure that doesn't happen for other people. All of the other things were fairly minor. You know, uh, dialogue would get interrupted by a hostile, and once I resumed the dialogue after killing the hostile, it would start from the beginning, which would feel a little weird because, you know, the, the person would be going, so who are you? And you'd be like, 
have you got short-term memory loss or something? Um, or the occasional animation bug. I've had two animation bugs so far, and they were very, very minor. A companion went into the zero G floating animation for a few seconds in a place where gravity was normal. And there was one of those odd head turn moments because a trader was in the process of turning to face one of her friends and I interrupted her to trade with her. And then when I finished the trade, she carried on turning her head to speak to them, but her body stayed at the counter. Little things like that, that was it. And there were very few of them. Performance-wise, the game's pretty solid. I was getting between about 80 and, say, 150 frames a second in most places, and it seemed to vary depending on where I was, what time of day it was, what sort of lighting was going on, what sort of weather was going on. It didn't fluctuate much in the moment. So if you were getting 90 frames a second in an area, it would probably stay around 90 frames a second most of the time. And that's a good sign. I was getting no hitching, no stutters, a general smooth experience the whole time. Of course, I have a 4090 in my machine and a 13900KS CPU, so I've got pretty much best case scenario for this kind of game. I was running at 1440p on ultra settings. If you are running an older machine, you may have to drop the settings a little. And obviously, I cannot promise how it's going to behave on your machine, and I would highly recommend you go and check some other sites or videos for performance from people who do that for a living. Go and find people who actually can show you the frame rate in different areas on different settings for the different graphics cards. I will tell you, as a general rule, the game seems to lean on the graphics card way more than the CPU. So let's move on to the content now, the quests. The main quest is very interesting, and I'm really enjoying it. And more importantly, as I've already mentioned, it is not overbearing. It's a lot closer to the sort of main quests you had in Oblivion, Skyrim, Morrowind, etc., in that you can take it or leave it. It's completely up to you. Um, it's the sort of quest that makes you want to engage with it, but you could play a character who just said, nope, I'm not interested, and you could go off and do a thousand other things. The game does not restrict you, which is absolutely brilliant. But it also feels like the game is giving me a lot of time on the main quest. Um, as in, I don't feel this constant pressure to absolutely focus on it. It feels like the sort of thing I can do as I travel around. It's, it's important, you are unlocking the secrets of the universe, but it's not time critical. It's not imminent. There are loads of interesting characters, enjoyable dialogue, and some great voice acting. And this goes for the side quests as well. I've actually been quite impressed with the side quests so far. I've not done any of the major factions, so I've not done any big side quest lines, but I've discovered quite a few that involved a lot more dialogue than I was expecting. A lot more multi-stage quests, even though they were quite small, the, the, the quest giver would have me doing three or four different things in different places that were, you know, short and sweet, but also interesting. And then I'd come back and have a conversation with them or someone else, and I'd try to resolve something. So I, I feel like they've upped their game in that area as well. And some of the random conversations I have just flying through space and some person, some trader <laughs> hails me have been brilliant. I've loved them. The dialogue system itself is old school RPG dialogue. They've returned to a more Skyrim-esque, Oblivion, Fallout 3 type dialogue rather than the dialogue wheel they had in Fallout 4 with its voiced protagonist. And I'm really enjoying that. I much prefer that system of dialogue 
in Bethesda Game Studios games. I really do. You can see the full line that you're going to speak and you're not restricted to four very small options. You could have two options. You could have seven or eight options. There are also quite a few lines that are specific for the skills, traits, or even the background choices your character has, and that is really good to see. And I love the persuasion system they're using. It's not just a simple skill check, it's actually, well, it's actually a mini game, but it's not the sort of puzzle mini game you had in Oblivion. It's a game where you're choosing different lines and Different lines have different difficulties, but they have more of an effect, and you have to push the persuasion meter along. It's it's a mini game, but it feels like a conversation. I like that. General gameplay is pretty solid for an RPG. The movement, the gunplay is reasonably fluid. It, again, is an improvement on their previous games. There is a vault system that lets you climb things. It's not that smooth, but it works. The zero and low G element of movement and combat is actually tons of fun, and I feel like it's pretty well done. Stealth is more or less what you expect. I've not done much stealthing, but if you've played a BGS game before, stealth is exactly as you would expect it to be. The lock picking is actually reasonably good, or at least as good as lock picking mini games get. It's not a it's not a mini game that requires reaction speed or um, you know hand eye coordination. It's just a simple puzzle. It's actually pretty fun the first few times you do it. Although, like all such mini games, it does get a little repetitive. Enemy AI is surprisingly good. Actually, I found myself having to think about the combat more. They didn't just run forward so I could mow them down. They would take cover. They would retreat if they were under pressure or their friends had died. They would even run away. But they would also relocate from one set of cover to the next, which uh, could cause you some confusion. If you ducked around a corner, saw them, shot at them, and then ducked back around the corner, reloaded your weapon, and then ran around to shotgun them in the face, you might find yourself staring at an empty space because they'd relocated to another corner and they're now shooting you in the back. I quite liked that. They kept me on my toes. They were still monumentally dumb about stealth, though. I mean, you could kill, like, five of them, leave one guy left, and then just run away very briefly, hide around a corner, and 30 seconds later he'd be like, all oh, right, he must have gone, I'm fine now, and just go back to his uh, routine, you know, surrounded by the corpses of his friends. So, <laughs> there's still that. The companion system is pretty much the same one as you had in Fallout 4, and you will get a variety of people to join you on your adventures. They have their own personalities. You, they will grow to like or hate you. And, you know, over time, you will unravel more of their backstory. The only thing of note I would mention there is the fact that they seem to have removed the companion control feature. You know where you would look at your follower and hold activate, and then you could tell them what to do? That is gone which is a shame because that was very, very useful. And the companions in this game, well, their AI doesn't seem to be as good as the enemy AI. And I had a numerous occasions them jumping out in front of my line of fire or just legging it into the middle of combat, standing in the middle of everyone's line of fire, screaming abuse at the enemies and then complaining that they were getting shot in the face. They also jump in front of you when you're mining. So, be careful of that. The character build system, again, very easy to understand. Only things worthy of note are the fact that you will level up to gain skill points, which will unlock or improve skills, but those skills cannot be improved without also using them. There are these things called challenges, which are simple ways of saying, you need to use this skill a certain number of times. So, it's a bit of a hybrid system. It's kind of like Skyrim in that you must use it to improve, but it's also like Fallout. You choose which skills will improve via skill points. On the equipment side, pretty much, again, self-explanatory. 
I am enjoying the range of weaponry I'm finding. There's a lot of variation. I do like that. There's some old-style earthy ones, new futuristic ones. In fact, I've spent the entire game so far with all of my hotkeys completely filled because I'm constantly wanting to try absolutely everything at once. Oh, one worthy point of note regarding spacesuits. I would recommend wearing them when traveling. Even if you're in your ship and you think to yourself, well, we're going to land on the planet and I know it's got a hostile atmosphere, but I'm not going to disembark until I've done a few things on ship. Do not do that because sometimes the game decides that you didn't want to stay on the ship and get yourself prepared. You wanted to run down the ramp straight into the middle of some trees, leg it for about 200 meters, and then suddenly realize you didn't have your spacesuit. I would also recommend this for any space stations or ships that you board in the vacuum of space. Speaking of the vacuum of space, there is space flight in this game. And that's where my first major complaint comes in. The space flight system, once you're in orbit, is actually pretty solid, if a little basic. But space flight in orbit is pretty much all there is. You will either be flying around a planet, flying about a moon, flying about some sort of station, etc. You will not be landing or taking off from a planet. You will not be flying from one planet to the next manually. You will be doing all of those things through the navigation menu. You will click on a planet, there will be an animation, and you will zoom off to the planet. You will be on the surface, you will say, take off, and an animation will appear where you take off, basically. This is not Elite Dangerous. It is an open-world RPG that has some simple elements of space flight and combat. But that is not my complaint. My complaint is the controls. They're kind of horrible. And they don't have to be. I mean, the core system itself is solid and it could work. It's just, I hated flying. The problem started when I realized there was no joystick support. At least, I couldn't get it to detect my Thrustmaster or my throttle. And there are no options in the settings that hint that there might be joystick support. There's mouse and keyboard, and there's controller support. And the mouse controls are horrible. They really are. Now, I'm willing to accept that this might just be a me problem. I might just suck at flying with mouse and keyboard in this game. Everyone else might be kicking ass and taking names in the vacuum of space. And I will admit that I did get better. I became more competent at surviving the fights. And, you know, I didn't, it didn't stop me from playing or even enjoying the game. But I did not at any point really enjoy the space combat at all. For starters, yaw and roll seem to be on the wrong hand for me. Mouse controls pitch and yaw. And your, your keyboard controls acceleration and roll. I, I feel like roll should be on the mouse and you're on the keyboard. It's just, I, it, I, I really did not find that instinctive at all. And there's no option in game to swap those. And then there's the problem that the mouse obviously has no auto centering and they've not provided a key that would do that. And they haven't even simulated a sort of dead zone. So when you're trying to move the flight stick back to dead center, you're constantly overshooting it and having to correct. And because the controls themselves are so sluggish and the, the ship seems to respond very, very slowly to your input, you kind of have to concentrate on the UI element that shows you where your flight stick is and try to get it pixel perfect. All the whilst, if you're in combat, you're trying to also look at a ship or something. And to further compound the problems, if you invert Y on your flight controls, which is a fairly popular and common thing to do in flight sims and space combat games, it makes that indicator, that UI indicator, completely wrong. 
When you pull back with your flight stick, it shows it as moving up, which causes a weird sort of conflict in your brain and your muscle memory when you're trying to correct for it. It's not showing you where your flight stick is at that point. It's kind of showing you where your flight stick would be if you weren't inverting Y or where your ship is heading. Thing is, I don't need to know where my ship is heading. I can see that. What I need to be able to do is understand exactly where my flight stick is and return it to center so I can fly straight. Now, I switched to controller to try that out and it is a massive improvement over mouse and keyboard, which is not a too big of a surprise seeing as it is closer to the joystick experience. If you have a controller and you are competent with it, I would recommend using that for space flight. Um, you also have the option to swap yaw and roll, so at least that's something. Unfortunately, I suck with controller, and whilst I felt it was a lot easier to fly smoothly and in a straight line using the controller, the minute an enemy appeared and I had to, you know, mentally think of multiple things and started pressing buttons, the whole thing fell apart and I was just, I was not just all over the place, I was standing up in the middle of the cockpit while being shot because I'd accidentally pressed get out of seat instead of uh, target enemy. And seeing as I do suck at controller, I would never even dream of using it in the first person um, aspect of the game. You know, when running around towns or planets, I'd be constantly switching between the two, which would absolutely do my head in. And honestly, when it came down to it, as bad as mouse and keyboard was, as frustrating and unpleasant as it was, I was better at combat with those, with those rather than the controller. I was genuinely looking forward to doing some sort of space pirate run through of this game, but I will be doing no such thing until there's either official joystick support or I figured a way to make joystick work with this game. In the meantime, we're going to need some tweaks to mouse and keyboard, uh, Bethesda. We really are. At the very least, you need an option to swap roll and yaw and have some sort of simulated dead zone to make it a little easier to center the ship. And honestly, you need the, the, the heads-up display element that shows you where your flight stick is to work with invert Y flight controls. Space flight may not be the biggest part of this game, but it is an integral part of it, and it needs to be fun for both mouse and keyboard users as well as controller users. I'm, I'm sure controller users are probably going to be playing this game and scratching their head. Um, unless you invert Y on your flight stick, which you might, in which case I will be curious to know if people have the same problem I had when they invert the Y on the flight stick. Did you have the same problems when looking at that, that UI element? Did it mess with your head the way it messed with mine? Because it really did. I would have switched it off. I would have actually found it easier to fly without even an indicator showing me where my flight stick was rather than one that was incorrectly showing me where my flight stick was. Anyway, that was a bit of a rant, wasn't it? Um, don't get me wrong, though. There is a lot of potential in the space flight and indeed the ship in general. I really enjoyed the ship building, even though I didn't get to engage with it too much. I tried different things. Of course, I went nuts the first time I discovered it, built all sorts of things, thought, oh, this looks really cool. And then I noticed this little exclamation mark in the bottom right hand corner and I clicked on it and it went, this thing is not going to fly because there are quite a few rules that you have to obey to make a ship space worthy, which does, in fact, make sense. I feel like this is something you're going to get into more towards the end of the game when you get a lot more money, maybe you get multiple ships. But right now, I'm tweaking around the edges, upgrading my ship, and that did help with combat, actually. Upgrading the ship and taking some skills in piloting and engines definitely helped. So again, for all me ranting about the control system, the core concept of the space flight system appeals to me. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that, I just don't want to be annoyed by the control system. Related to shipbuilding, we also have outpost building. And you're probably thinking something along the lines of the settlement building system in Fallout 4. 
and there are some obvious comparisons there, but these are actually kind of different. For a start, it really is presented as almost an afterthought by one of the companions, and then never mentioned again. It's kind of left up to you whether or not you want to engage with it. And the process of building an outpost is much more streamlined. Instead of building individual things, you just sort of build units. You'll build a resident unit, you'll build a hydroponics unit, and then maybe you'll build an extractor or something. And in, in fact, for a lot of the uses I've ended up using the outpost for, you don't even need much of that because you don't actually need people at the outpost. I did create an outpost where I could assign crew members because it is nice to have a place where you can send people that, you know, your ship has a maximum number of crew members, you see, and you will start collecting people. It is nice to have somewhere to send them. But outside of that, the only reason I would go there is because I'm storing a lot of my components there. I'm using it as a player home, sort of. The only other places I've set up outposts are places that had resources I needed on my main outpost. And I set up a very basic automated system that will mine something and then stick it onto a cargo ship and, and send it. Now, I feel that later on in the game, they could become much more useful. Perhaps as you start traveling further afield, you will need supply lines set up and it'll be nice to be able to have, say, fuel or whatever else resource you need shipped from all these other little outposts you set up to a sort of forward operating base. That would be kind of nice. You can also set up quick outposts if you've got the resource and just build a scanner enhancer. So you get out your ship, you build the outpost, you build a scanner enhancer, and now your scanner will go three times further, allowing you to figure out what's going on in the area, survey a place better, etc. And I'm guessing towards the end game, or maybe on a later playthrough, some people are going to want to just do a massive kind of empire building escapade, max out all the skills that allow you to have more and better um, outposts and just build these absolute production behemoths that, that make you so rich and tons of resources, etc. So there's probably a whole game there in of itself. But what I like about it is as useful as it could be, it's completely not in your face. The user interface for this game is pretty standard interface as Bethesda Game Studios games go. It seems better designed for playing on a console on a big TV than it does on a monitor, to be honest, but that's to be expected with most games nowadays. The heads-up display is somewhat in your face, no pun intended. You cannot turn off uh, many of the options, so it's always there, it's always taking up real estate. But my major complaint is the use of the center of the screen for stuff that has no business being in the center of the screen. I mean, for example, the experience gain. Every time you kill something or do something, you get a notice telling you you've got experience. I mean, personally, I don't even really need that. I, I, I'm quite happy knowing I'm getting experience without being told each and every time. But I don't want it at the center of the screen. It's distracting and it can kind of get in the way. But you know what gets in the way? 10 times more than that. The giant banner that appears every time you, uh, you know, discover something, for example. And especially seeing as half the times you discover something, you are also discovering things that want to murder you. And this giant banner is covering them. It's in the way. I can't see them. I'm trying to target a ship and it's behind a bunch of bloody words. That has got to go. And that's pretty much all I have to tell you at the moment. Like I said, I've only been playing for about 45 hours, and that's not nearly enough to do a review for this game. I'm going to need at least another 100 hours. I probably want to at least finish the main quest and do one major side faction before I would commit to doing an actual review. What I will tell you is so far, I am thoroughly enjoying the game, and more importantly, I really do see myself playing multiple times. I get the feeling this could be a very replayable game, which is great news for the game, but it's also great news for the modding community, because as I mentioned in a series I did long ago, where I discussed the Elder Scrolls formula, one of the things that made 
uh, Bethesda Game Studios games so moddable is how replayable they were. And what made them so replayable was also how moddable they were. There was kind of a feedback loop here. And I'm feeling like that's going to happen this time because I really do see more similarities with this game and Skyrim than, say, this game and Fallout 4. Um, I can already see a bunch of mod potential. A user interface mod, a map and a journal mod, DLSS mod. Yeah, there's no DLSS. Not wonderfully happy about that, but uh, yeah. There's obviously going to be mods like graphical mods, mods that make the water look better, that sort of thing. It just all goes without saying. Oh, and I need a mod that allows you to use a controller without disabling the mouse and keyboard. Why do games do that? Why do games do that? Don't disable the mouse and keyboard when the controller's used, or at least have an option for it. Some people might want to use a controller and use hotkeys on their keyboard. Or in my case, some of us have got an analog keyboard that can mimic a controller, and we want to use a controller for movement, but the mouse for looking. I'm sure there'll be a mod to do that, because there's mods for their previous games that do that, but, you know. All I can really tell you, though, is I'm thoroughly enjoying playing this game. I'm really looking forward to finishing it and playing it again. I'm really excited to see what the modding community can make, and I've just got a very positive feeling about this one. It's nice to see a game release in, in a very stable, playable state. I know that's a low bar, but it's still, it's good to see. And it's good to see Bethesda Game Studios going back to what they do best. Open world, single player games, where all I want to do is just wander off in random directions, annoying whatever companion is following me. This is where we belong.